Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. We've been talking in this small series a hypothesis about hypothesis testing for chi-squared. Now, in the last video, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you go back because this is cumulative, we talked about the F portion of FRED. So remember that was formulate the problem. Now we're on to the R portion of FRED, which is reviewing conditions. Now for these problems, conditions are actually pretty specific, and these two things that I'm about to state have to be true. So I'm going to talk about what they are, and then we'll continue on in more detail on how to um, check those things. So the first thing is that you have to have no expected counts. less than one. Now, expected counts is often shortened to just EC, and we're gonna talk about what that is in just a minute. The second thing, so this has to be checked, the second thing, and these both have to happen, remember, is that less than 20% of expected counts, remember that's what we shortened to EC, um, can be less than five. So those are the rules. Both of these have to be true. No expected count can be less than one, and you can't have more than 20% of cells with an expected count less than five. So on the next portion of this, we'll look at how to calculate those expected counts and how to calculate that um, percentage for the table that you have. So here's our formula for expected counts. Now, if you remember when we started this series on um, two variables and we were looking at two categorical variables, we have these tables that are called contingency tables. So you have one variable being represented on this portion of the table and one represented on this. Now this would be two rows, so two by two columns, so two by two. This is our table. Now with this, in each of these cells, you have an observed count. Okay, so each cell will have its own observed count and that's what you actually observe in the data. So when the contingency table is created right off the jump, every single cell has an observed count. Now what we're talking about is something called an expected count. Now, an expected count is what you would expect to see if there was no association between these two variables. So the way that it's calculated is it will take the total that you have here in the rows and the total in the columns. So remember that in these contingency tables, you have totals and then you have a total here that's called the grand total. So this cell here is going to be the grand total. Remember that bottom right-hand corner. So when you calculate these, you'll take the total for the row, maybe it's this portion, times the total for the column. So remember the up and down are the columns, the left to right are the rows, and then you'll divide that by the grand total. It's a fairly easy calculation, but you need to do it for each cell. So for this cell, you'd have this row total times this column total, and you divide by this grand total. Here for this cell, you would have an expected count. It would take this row total, but this time this column total, and divide by this grand total. So you'd have to calculate that yourself. And again, what you're doing is you're essentially providing what you would expect to see, hence the term, if there was no association between the two variables. Because ultimately, we wanted, what we want to do is see if there's an association. So to be able to see that, we have to have some baseline, which is what this expected count is gonna do. So after you calculate all of these expected counts, you have to figure out if your conditions are met. So you'll know what each expected count is, so you'll be able to easily verify if all of them are greater than one, because you can have no expected counts that are less than one. So that's easy to verify here. The other thing though is you have to have less than 20% of cells with an expected count less than five. So how do you calculate what percent each cell is? Well, in a two by two table, it's kind of easy, right? Because you have one, two, three, four, so that means each cell is one divided by four or 25%. 
but if you get a bigger table, that can be confusing perhaps. And so this is the formula for you to be able to figure out what percent each cell represents. To do that, you would take the number of expected counts that are less than five, so see how many of your cells are less than five, and divide by the total number of cells. But remember, you do not include the total row or the total column in your count for how many cells you have. So that's how you review conditions. Remember, both of those things have to be true. No expected count can be less than one, and less than 20% of cells can be less than five. In the next video, we'll talk about executing calculations. See you there. That's